Well, guys, I am excited to be here tonight as always. Uh, show of hands, who was not here last week? Just out of curiosity. Okay. So, uh, those of you who were not here, we got to start a new series on the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, this was one of Paul's letters to a church in the New Testament. And I really love this letter, this book in particular, because Paul gives very blunt and easy instructions to newer Christians. So, really excited to go through this book together. Uh, who remembers what we talked about last week? Anybody? Yes. Conflict. Conflict. Very good. Yes. We talked about difficult situations that we can face as Christians and how to work through those things. So I hope that that helped you guys. Again, if you were not able to be here, just a reminder, you guys can actually catch up on all of our Wednesday messages on our YouTube page. Um, just head over to Lifeway, uh, Lifeway Church on YouTube. There's a playlist uh, called Lifeway Youth, and you guys can watch uh, all of our messages on there. Um, so, as I said, I am excited for the message tonight. However, if you thought that last week was kind of spicy, hmm, tonight's going to be a little bit spicier, believe it or not, because we're going to be talking about an issue that the Corinthians had that Paul is going to address, talking about sexual morality and some of the, the issues that they wrestled with and what that means for us. Now, before we get into Scripture, I want to kind of immerse you guys into the modern experience, okay? This is something that most of you already know, but I'm trying to demonstrate a point. You'll, you'll understand where I'm going in just a minute. I want to talk to you guys as teens for just a second. As a teenager, what's up? We're going to talk about it in just a minute, okay? Stay with me. So, as teenagers... Most of you guys wake up in the morning, and probably the first thing you do is get on your phone, right? Many of you have social media, and so the very first things that you guys may see, for example, is a really, like, chiseled dude with no shirt on. All the ladies are like, oh my goodness, did he just say that? Mm -hmm. Guys, we often get on social media, and we see, like, really cute girls in bikinis, right? It just, it happens sometimes, right? Okay? So you get up, you're on social media, and that's the first thing you see. Then you go to school, where you hear countless stories about boyfriends and girlfriends spilling details about things they shouldn't be doing, much less telling other people. You hear about new Netflix shows with kind of some saucy content, maybe like a like maybe you're at a lunch table, guys especially you're at a lunch table, and somebody's like, man, there's this new like hot TikTok account, like this girl's really hot. You start passing the phone around the table, like wow, she's really cute, right? Is this like, is this accurate or am I totally, totally off base? Is it this accurate? Then we hear, we hear like suggestive music. Uh, even the Olympics a few months ago, you guys watched, there was like images of half-naked men and women that's like, oh my goodness, right? Okay? We go to school, there's saucy gossip, there's locker room talk. All the while, we have these portable computers in our pockets. So you guys, as teenagers, live in a world where everything is permissible and accessible. But if you think that it's just you guys as teenagers that struggle with that stuff, that have that in your lives, you're wrong. It's not. Let me talk to our adult sponsors for just a second. Because you guys go through the same things just in different ways, right? You also get on social media in the morning and you have custom advertisements to your age, your gender, and your marital status. These advertisers know you just as you know you. On the drive to work, you see an inappropriate bumper sticker. You hear uh, gossip at work about so-and-so's marriage or, or relational life that's not doing too well. You get asked if you're going to go to the Pride Festival or if you're going to go to certain restaurants with the crew. Like, th this is how crazy this is nowadays, guys. Even just trying to find a good, wholesome book can be a tall order. And so just like our teens, you guys as adults live in a world where everything is permissible and accessible. But if you guys think that 
I'm immune just because I'm a pastor, you're wrong because I live in the same world that you guys do, okay? As a pastor, I get on the church social media pages every single day. Let me say that again. The church social media pages, and I see the same scandalous advertisements. I get the unwanted, suggestive reels or videos on my smartphone, except as a pastor, my paycheck depends on not giving in to those things and living a holy life for Jesus, right? So just like you guys, I live in a world where everything is permissible and accessible. It's available. So here's my question. As followers of Jesus, how can we live pure lives in an impure culture? How can we honor God with what we see, what we don't see, what we're putting into our minds, what we do with our bodies? How can we honor God in an impure culture? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And this is an issue that Paul uh, wrestles with the Corinthians in great detail. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 9. I wanted to, to read this to you tonight. Paul says this. He says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery are male prostitutes, practice homosexuality, are thieves, greedy people, drunkards, abusive, cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And some of you were once like that. But you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You say, the NIV puts it this way, everything is permissible. I am allowed to do anything. But Paul says, not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. The NIV says, I will not be mastered by anything. I will not have anything reign supreme over my life. You say, food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. And this is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, Jesus. And the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually part of Christ? So should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. He says, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. There's a lot in that passage, isn't there? That's kind of heavy sometimes. Uh, and so I want us to talk about this, break this down really quick, and then we'll kind of get into some different points. So here's kind of Paul's point here. He's basically saying, hey, Corinthians, you guys have some serious issues. You guys say that you can live however you want to, but don't you know that those kinds of people, those kinds of lifestyles, that sin, okay, in all forms, will not be allowed into the kingdom of God. So why are you still doing these things? You hear his tone, like how he's so concerned, like this isn't okay, this isn't going to be in God's kingdom, so why are you still doing it? I really like this line especially when he says, you say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. Everything is permissible, but I will not be mastered by anything. His point, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. That sounds like common sense, but it's really, really just so, so applicable to us. Just because you can do something 
doesn't mean you should. For example, just because you can watch certain shows or play certain video games or tell certain stories doesn't mean that you should. And that kind of goes into our next question, like what things shouldn't we be doing as Christians? Well, I'm glad you asked because Paul gives a pretty, pretty exhaustive list um, of things that won't get into the kingdom of God. I want to go through these just really quickly, okay? So sexual immorality, Trinity was asking about this. I said sexual morality and sexual immorality, two different things. Morality is how we're supposed to use sex. We're going to talk about that next week when we talk about Christian marriage. Uh, sexual immorality means participating in sexual sin of any kind. This word includes a lot of different things, activities, mindsets, okay? Uh, then he goes into some other stuff, some other sins, idolaters. This is someone who worships someone or something other than the triune God of the universe. Then he says adulterers. This is someone who is married who then does anything sexual with someone who is not their spouse. That's what adultery means. Then he has this kind of this line that makes us go, what? He says, men who have sex with men. This is someone who practices homosexuality. Now, now hear me. I know this is a super hot topic right now. Hear me, okay? Paul's not talking about someone who is facing temptation. There's a difference. Because remember, Jesus was sinless, and yet he was tempted, Right? So merely facing temptation is not sin, but it's when we give in to sin. So Paul's talking about someone who gives in to those desires just like any other kind of sexual temptation, okay? Then he talks about thieves. You guys know what that is. Greedy. This is someone who always wants more, especially what belongs to someone else. Drunkards, most of us know that, like abusing alcohol. Slanderers. Oh, gosh, this one hit me this week. We gotta watch how we talk sometimes, right? A slanderer is a person who speaks to or about someone or something in an insulting way. But we never do that, right? We say, I'm just venting. Are you though? Are we? That's a tough one. And then a swindler or a robber. So that's obviously a really long and heavy list. And I just want to kind of, I want to acknowledge this list for just a minute. Because the fact is, in a room like this, or maybe watching online, like many of us have done at least some of those things, or we have family members or friends that have done those things. And it can sometimes be hard to read that list and not feel, not feel shame. We just hear that and we kind of go, Ooh. you know what I'm saying? But hear me, guys. I don't want what I'm talking about tonight. I don't want this message to shame you. I want this to call us to action. Because remember, the very next thing that Paul says is this. He says, some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Guys, the good news of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is that all of us in this room, every single person who's ever exi existed except Jesus has sinned. We've all done terrible things. We've sinned against God. And yet Jesus still loves us. He still loves us enough to die for our sin. So if you're in here tonight and you're feeling that shame, or maybe you're watching this later on, if you have accepted Jesus, if you've repented of your sins, but you still feel shame sometimes, I just want to encourage you. I, I, I kind of want to rebuke that shame in the name of Jesus. Because guys, that's not of God. It's not. God has extended his grace, mercy, and forgiveness to us when we repent, okay? I think sometimes we just need that reminder that we are called sons and daughters of the Most High God. However, with all that being said, 
What Paul's also trying to get across to the Corinthians is that God's grace does not mean that we can just do whatever we want. That's his point here. That's why he's coming down kind of hard, because it's really easy to fool ourselves into thinking, you know, Jesus died for my sins, he forgives me, so I can just do whatever I want. Well, no. That's, that's, not, that's not how it works. There's another letter of, uh, of Paul's, I think it's in Romans, maybe it's Galatians, somewhere in there, uh, where he brings up that argument. It, let's just sin all the more so that grace may abound. And he says, by no means. It's like he's saying, no, really loud. No, that's not the point. Absolutely not. His point is that because Jesus has atoned for our sin, we as Christians are called to live differently. We're called to live differently than the world. So we shouldn't be intentionally watching hot guys or girls on TikTok. We shouldn't be going to places that fill our mind with ungodly things. We shouldn't be listening to music or reading books or watching shows that cause us to stumble. We should instead be honoring Jesus with our minds and our bodies. And by the way, I kind of mentioned this at the beginning of tonight, but this is kind of applicable too. When Paul says, honor God with your body, that also refers to drugs, okay? Like vaping and that sort of thing. I believe that 100% because it's not good for you. It says, the, the, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Those things are not for you. They are not good for you. But that's kind of another message. Anyways, so back to the question of tonight. As followers of Jesus, how can we live pure lives in an impure culture? Well, Paul tells us very bluntly. He says, run away. Flee from sexual sin. Don't entertain those thoughts. Take them captive in the name of Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And then run away. Get out of there. If you're facing temptation, if you're at school and you're in a friend group and people are like talking about stuff, you just go... Thanks, guys. See you later. You walk away. Guys, if you think it's easy to live a pure life, can I just tell you, it's not. It's really not. In the ancient city of Corinth, okay, where Paul's writing this letter, there's actually a temple to the goddess of, uh, called Aphrodite. She was supposedly the goddess of love. I'm going to keep it kind of G-rated, but let's just say... There's some really icky stuff happening in this city at this temple, okay? Some really, like, not good stuff. And the Corinthian Christians live in the city. They're walking the sidewalk. They're walking the streets every day. They see this temple. It was so accessible and so available to walk to the temple and do whatever they wanted to do, just like nowadays. It's so accessible and available to do whatever we want to do. Remember what I said at the beginning. Everything is permissible and available. So just like the Corinthians, we live in a culture where it's okay to do whatever you want with whoever you want, whenever you want, and wherever you want. But remember this. If you don't take anything away from tonight except this, I want you to hear this. Everybody eyes on me. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Paul says, No temptation has overtaken you except what's common to mankind. He's saying, if you have temptation with this, you are not weird. Everyone has this kind of temptation. It's common to being human. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. When you are tempted, he will. He will provide a way out. So, how do we do this? How do we live pure lives? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to end a little bit early tonight. We're going to go into our breakout groups in just a couple of minutes. Um, Keaton, you got the next picture up? So we're going to do things a bit differently the next few weeks. Instead of our breakout groups we've been doing, we're going to do four groups, junior high, guys and girls separated, and junior high, excuse me, uh, senior high girls and guys separated, okay? So you can see where you're going to meet with your leaders and that sort of thing. 
And here's what we're going to talk about. Next slide, if you would. Out of the, the sins and the struggles we've talked about tonight, we're going to talk about which ones we see at school, what do we see in the lives of people around us, and then we're going to develop a strategy for living a pure life. We're going to get super practical with some things that we can do to help us stay on the right path. So here's kind of the summary, okay? What we talked about. Sin will not enter the kingdom of God, but we have been forgiven. Remember that, guys. We have been forgiven of our sin because of Jesus' atoning death on the cross. And therefore, we are called to live differently. As Paul tells us, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Jesus died for you. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Let's pray. Jesus, I know that this can be a very, very difficult topic and just really hard stuff to wrestle with, Lord. But I just pray once again, there would be no shame in this room. There would be no shame in the discussions we're about to have, but that we could be open, that we could trust people in these conversations, Lord, and that you would help us to live pure lives. Give us the tools we need, the mentors, the, the accountability partners, Lord. Help us to live pure lives in an impure culture. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Amen.